Hey gang, this is Dr. Eccles again. So glad to be with you. And as always, we've got our lovely Miss Karina here. She's going to help me today. And I got to thinking about, uh, actually, I was just talking with Karina about it. She says, you need to share that with our listeners because that's pretty interesting. So I, I wanted to talk to you about, I actually wrote a paper not too long ago for my patients. It was just called the 80% rule. And, and basically what I was trying to get over is that across is that your body's got to be about 80% broken before you even get the first symptom to let you know that there's a problem. I wanted to give you a few kind of examples of that. So cancer is unfortunately kind of like that. We really don't know we've got cancer uh, up until like 10 years after it's first in the body. That's what is estimated. By the time that first cell starts growing and we've got cancer, by the time it gets bad enough to where we actually have some symptoms, 10 years has gone by. So it, there's an example. Heart disease is a great example. One of my good friends recently had a heart attack and they found out that his widowmaker artery was like 90% blocked, you know, and he had no idea. You know, he's a pretty active, pretty good, pretty good in shape and the whole bit. But yet, you know, his body had to get in terrible shape before there was even a symptom. And often the, the, the symptoms, the, um, the statistics on heart disease is that about 50% of the cases, 45 to 50% of the cases, the very first symptom of heart disease is a fatal heart attack. That's the first symptom that you, that you even get is that you have a fatal heart attack. So, you know, who wants to wait for that? I don't think many people do. So we want to, we want to be proactive about our health. You know, diabetes is that way. You don't really know you've got diabetes until you, until you've got it. Uh, or you're heading that way unless you're regularly checking your blood sugar to make sure. Um, uh, what was the other one that was that's like that? Um, cancer, diabetes, heart disease. Oh, high blood pressure. You, if you're not checking that regularly, you could have a stroke because it's got to get pretty high in order for you to have that stroke. So the thing that often people don't realize that the same principle applies to us mechanically or musculoskeletal reasons. And I find people all, every single day who tell me, no, I don't have any back problems at all. But when we start going in and we start checking muscles, we find that they've got lots of back problems, but they don't have any symptoms to tell them yet. So by testing these muscles, which I'm going to show you here in a few minutes, wow, what a great way to find out whether you've got back problems before they get to that 80%. Wouldn't you rather get them fixed at 20% or 40% or even 50% broke rather than wait and not having any symptoms rather than wait until you're 80% broke and you can't get out of the chair or you can't get out of bed? You see what I'm saying? So this is real, real important. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and have you lay down in a second uh, and we're going to go ahead and test some muscles so we can see. I, I had a, uh, I've had a lot of people come to me over the years and uh They'll say things like, oh, my back is absolutely killing me, you know, and I go, well, when did this start? And they'll say, uh, it started a week ago. And I take an x-ray of them, and my God, they've had a problem in their back for over 20 years. You can see it. The back is so aged and degeneration, lots of problems in there. They've had this problem for 20 years, but they never knew it up until last week. So that just further illustrates the point. It's got to be pretty well broke before you start having problems. Uh, another thing to watch out for is the come and go problems. These are the worst because, you know, somebody will get a back or neck problem. They'll wake up with their neck crooked like this. So they, oh, I slept on it wrong. It'll go away in a week and then it'll start, then it'll come back later on. Those are the worst because, you know, they go away and the, the guy thinks, okay, oh, I'm good. But you'll notice that these problems start happening more and more frequently and with more and more you know, duration and more intensity. That's because the problem's always there whether the symptom is or not. Mm -hmm. So if you start having these intermittent problems, women are real good about going and getting those checked out. Men are terrible at it. You know, they go, ah, oh, I just took a few aspirin and went away and never came back. These are the kind of issues that probably should at least get your doctor of chiropractic to check it out and make sure that everything is fine. So it doesn't keep progressing even while you don't have symptoms and then come back with a vengeance. So let's check a few muscles, see if she's got any problems that she doesn't even know about because right now, she, as far as she knows, she's feeling great, right? Yeah. All right, let's have you lay on your back. 
And hopefully everything works perfect and that she is. Let's check a few things right here. So push back there for me. This is checking the posterior deltoid, which corresponds to her cervical spine or her neck area, and it's checking out pretty good. Push down for me right here. Very good. What we're looking for, and this is a big thing that I, I, I go over this a lot with my patients. We're not, we're not really interested in how strong she is. We know she's pretty strong. But I could be doing this on a little four-year-old girl and who's not very strong at all. What we're checking for to make sure is that muscle will lock into place. That's very important. So it's not how hard I'm pushing or anything like that. It's that the muscle locks, push. So that's what I mean by locking in place. If the muscle, now kind of let your muscle go uh, just a ratchety weak, okay? Push, push, push down a little bit harder. See if it kind of ratchets and does this, kind of ratchet effect and goes down, that's not locking in place. It's not, it's not actively working. It's, it's neurologically deficient. It's not working properly. It's, it's very similar, and you may have heard me on other videos talk about it's kind of like a circuit breaker is tripped somewhere in her body and that, you know, it's shutting off this muscle. So, and I tell people this because it's important because if I don't, they'll want to go out and try to exercise that muscle and get it strong, and it's not going to work. It's neurologically connect, disconnected from the body. It's like having your refrigerator, uh, the, the circuit breaker, trip your refrigerator, and you thinking you're going to go put Freon in it and get it cold again. This won't work. So take your arm. We're going to check the upper trapezius here, and I want you to put it here like that. There you go. And I want you to push straight back for me. Uh-huh. Mm. There we go. Okay. There's one right <laughs> there. That will not work. Push up. See, she's trying. She's trying with I'm all her strength, all but it won't lock into place. So this is probably uh, an issue that you're having either in your back somewhere. It could, be, it could actually be anywhere. You know, uh, but this is where the, the technique that we use helps us to locate these areas of travail. Love that word, travail. And go ahead and find them, fix them, and then we go back and we check the muscle. Would you like to, me to work on that for a few minutes? Um, sure. Okay, <laughs> very good. So we're going to, first of all, I'm going to have you lock your elbow in right there. And we're going to, I'm just going to walk down to the feet here and put, lock that into place. Eyes closed for me. Now just keep your legs apart right there. And keep that arm right there for me, Karina. Don't let me push it down. There you go, about like that. And now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of figuring out what it is that's making that muscle weak. And one of the things that's making it weak, you can put your arm down. It's this one that we're working on, is there's a point right next to her spine. Is that tender at all right there? Yeah. And also the muscle itself. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Now, she told me she didn't have any problems. But now that we found this weak muscle and we're poking on some of the points that correspond to this muscle, now she's going, oh, yeah, that, that hurts. Yeah, That's does. very tender. So we're going to pulse these two points together. And this kind of gets those areas talking to one another again. It's kind of like there's been a family feud. And these parts aren't talking to each other. And I'm kind of a pretty good diplomat. I can get these guys talking together again. And that will help strengthen that muscle. And I'm feeling for these pulses. And sometimes you'll feel a pulse in one hand and then in another. And they'll kind of bounce around like a ping pong ball. And then... Eventually, they'll start to pulse together. They'll synchronize, and you'll feel. Poof, poof, poof. So let's see if that's enough. So now she can push again for me there. Good. All right. And it also turns out that you have a vertebra that's in your middle of your back that's out of place. Your T10 vertebra on the left side. So I'm going to have you roll on your tummy and let's going to go ahead and adjust that. So a lot of y'all have heard me talk about before that, um, you know, wherever the problem is or wherever it's kind of barking, 
that that isn't necessarily where the problem is. So um, in this case, she's got a vertebra that's way down in her back that's contributing to the weakness that's in her shoulder. And that's real important to know because a lot of times people come in and they, you know, they say, oh, it hurts here. And, you know, I start working somewhere else and they go, no, 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 it's here. And I go, I understand, I understand, but, you know, that isn't where it's coming from. So it's important to know. Oh, wait a minute. All right, and I'm going to put a little pressure right here. There it goes. Great. Lay on your back for me now. So we just adjusted her T10, thoracic 10 vertebra on the left side there. Keep those feet apart for me. I had a girl. Let's go back to see where we're at. Push here. There we go. All right, and then she's got another spot right here that's going to be kind of tender. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Whoa. I had no idea. Yeah, that's part of the what we were talking about, you know, the 80% rule. Your body tries to keep this stuff from you as long as it can. <laughs> it doesn't want you to hurt. It's, it's trying to be nice. Bless you, <laughs> scat. Okay, let's go back to this. This is showing that she's got some things that are actually involved with the cranial sutures in her skull that may be a little bit misaligned. And we're just gonna kind of bypass that right now because we're not gonna go adjust your cranium right now. But I wanted the audience to know that sometimes these sutures in the skull, they actually move, uh, not very much, but they do move and they move with respiration. When we breathe, they actually move and they're, they're what actually pump the cerebral spinal fluid through the brain and through the spinal cord. So oftentimes when we're being born or through being slapped in the head or whatever, this trauma can sometimes cause these spinal uh, plates, not spinal, excuse me, cranial plates to uh, not be really lined up and not be moving and they get fixated and locked. And that's why sometimes people have eye, one eye a little lower than the other or their ears a little lower or you know, their face isn't perfectly symmetrical because these cranial bones are not in the right position. And there are ways to, to get that. Uh, and there's some practitioners that uh, they are really well, well versed in that. So now back to this. Here we go. Okay, and she also has a vertebra in her neck that is out of place. Uh, push here. Okay, turn your head this way. <clears throat> okay, so uh, in the testing, we found out that she, first of all, she had a, a vertebra out in her upper, in her lower part of her thoracic spine. We adjusted that. Now, uh, now it's showing that we've got a problem up here in the neck. It's actually the third cervical vertebra. And we also tested to see which way her head should be turned when we adjusted her and which direction the vertebra should be going. A lot, uh, sometimes... Um, it's very important to adjust with the head in the right direction and the line, line of drive. Very important. So we're going to just turn here. Oof. Just a little click like that. That a girl. How you doing down there? Oh my gosh, oh. That was intense. All right. 
perfect. Let's put this one over here. Now let's see where we are. Push here for me. Okay. You pushing? Trying to. So this is the way we know. You know, her arm goes weak at this point, which means that everything that was causing that muscle to be weak is now fixed. So we'll go ahead and retest that muscle and see how it works. Now push back for me real hard. Oh my God, I can do it now. <laughs> now you can hold it. So this is what, how we find problems. Don't misunderstand, the weak, the weak muscle that she had was not the problem. There was a lot of other things in her body that were causing the problem. But we use the weak muscle to kind of figure out how to get in the body and where to go and what to do and how to fix it. This is just an indicator. So very much like, you know, everybody's had one of those check engine lights come on your car. The check engine light is not the problem. It's just telling you that there is a problem. So this muscle being weak is like a check engine light. We need to check some stuff out and figure out why is it weak. So we went through and, and, and figured out all of the different problems that we're in. We corrected every one of them. Then the end check engine light goes off. And that is analogous to now this muscle push is just rock solid strong. So it's a great way to figure out uh, if you're having problems and keep yourself tuned up. You see, she had a problem in her neck that, you know, if she left that go another 10 years, it would have turned into arthritis and problems that she wouldn't have liked at all. But we found it a lot earlier than that and got it corrected just like that. So use that to help yourself in your health. Be proactive in your health. Go get checked out by someone who knows how to do this work. That'll really save you a lot of time and trouble and heartache in the end. I hope, sit up for me, I hope that you have found this video helpful. Uh, we love bringing them to you, and we hope that it's, uh, you find this interesting and that it can benefit you and your family. So if there's anything that I can do to help you, please don't hesitate to look on my website, jeffeckles.com, or be uh, happy to email you with questions. So hopefully we'll see you the next time. Take care. Bye-bye.